Hello there everyone and welcome to another root learning video here on the channel. My name is Emily Jane. Today we are here at um, Vienna's Floristorf Yard, Floristorf Yard with a OBB1216 which is a version of the Taurus locomotive. Today we'll be operating a freight service from here non-stop to Ho Hohenberg Yard. Train's ready for departure. You can see we've got the front pan up, just getting some compressed air in. Not much left to do in the cab of the uh, 1216. So you can see, as soon as I've cycled forward, my front pan's come down. I'm going to enable my desk. Maybe I'm not. And I'm going to release my parking brake. Now that I've done that, I'm going to make sure my uh, local brake is set to keep us stationary for now. I'm going to use my AFB, select 40 kph. We've got a departure signal. Brake comes off. I'm going to press my E key to depress the reverse and unlock it. And away we go. In my second video today in a Siemens product. I, of course, did the first video of today in a uh, wonderful uh, Taurus by K-Trains. This is the OBB1216 by Railworks Austria. And honestly, pretty awesome little train here. Uh, we are also on the Nordbahn route by the same developers. This route sort of loosely connects Vienna, well, the outskirts of Vienna, and a freight yard just before the Czech border. So the I believe the ultimate idea for this route is for it to run for all the way from, from, from Petrochlov in the Czech Republic right the way through to Vienna. Not as this route, but you know, it's sort of an extension of itself basically, I guess. As you can see, our maximum speed today is 40, sorry, our maximum speed initially is 45. Although it's actually 40, so I might as well clear that because it makes very little difference. I'm going to open the correct drink now. And, and uh, start my little video here. So you can see a regional express train coming towards us there. With the trailer car leading. And a little passenger train there. So a quick cab tour of the 1216, we have driven this before on the channel, and that was back when we were recording, actually I'll do it when we got on the move a little bit. In here we are powering our way out of here, as you can see we're quite a heavy train so we are actually still only at 20. So this train has a different bound CIFA to most trains. So I accidentally ended up hitting the horn whilst trying to reset the CIFA. So the CIFA flashes up on the right hand side there and that is our safety system. That's ensuring that we're basically awake and conscious at the wheel. I'm going to acknowledge for this passing it. Clear the CIFA and you can see there's a 120 limit. So what I'll do is do a cheeky little double tap the E key which is the switch that unlocks the throttle, but also sets off our Roadrunner system. Roadrunner measures the length of the train. So when I hear cheeky meep meep, which is why it's called Roadrunner, we'll be able to accelerate to 100 kph. As that is the maximum speed of our train today, we are running a rake of Habins, I believe these would be. Yes, they are Habins from now on. Um, and they're empty, which is what restricts us to 100. So now that I've reset the CIFA, I put the power straight back on. You can see, like I say, the uh, bins is there. Um, empty steel. They're on the way in, in the lore of this scenario. They are on their way to Ostrava in the Czech Republic, which is actually where I used to live when I lived over there, which is quite cool. Uh, is there is a big sort of steel works there, so British rolled steel for the Austrian market. So power on to keep rolling, keep rolling, rolling, rolling. 
you can see this is obviously not doesn't have quite have the functionality of the Vectron. But I can actually see a lot of the ancestry here of the systems and the logic. So gonna, that's going to restrict us to an 85. Put that in the box. So when I refer to speed in the box, that's actually a bit of a slang term I've picked up from doing flights in for so long. Speed in the box refers to the speed you pre-selected, basically. There you go. It's basically because there's a red here which is incorrectly si uh, incorrect base signaling. So you, you tab it as you go past. You can see you've got the OBV sign there and the S Bahn logo on the outside of the station. Like I say, RWA for me is definitely one of my favourite devs. Into you know, th there's some areas they fall down. Actually, sorry, correction, this is 3D Zug route, I believe. Or is it? I'm I'm actually being confused now. Hang on, let me check. So we can now continue at line speed. Um, so. No, it's RWA, it's not bomb. Yeah. Well, I, I say at line speed at all. Sp trains restrict, uh, um, restricting speed, but still. Same difference and all that. So you can hear the uh, tractor ship effort going in. I'm going to wallop that down. Hopefully you guys can hear the actual train. I've noticed that it's feedback in some of the more recent videos that you can't really hear what's going on and that's not really great so hence I'm doing a freaking fix. Just out of precaution I'll drop my speed back here. I'm not sure why we've got a cautionary aspect here. Spads approved, we've got another green aspect. I just can't clear the uh, PZ view until well after. Hence you have to tab these red aspects. So, um, oh. so uh, it's actually quite handy that you hear the beep on this train. There you go, 100 in the window. I'll actually shut my little window now. So, um, quick cab tour of the 1216. From left to right, got your radio, exactly the same setup as on the uh, on the Vectron SOS button, emergency brake and pan drop. Further up at the left, um, brake release, compressor, plan up, M MCB controls. Active train supply, ETCS, PZB acknowledge, PZB release, PZB override, AFB throttle, reverser, door controls as these do operate the uh, rail jets. You've got a mirror rail safety system as well. This is used in the Czech Republic. I will demonstrate a mirror rail system one day, but I just want to find another Czech route that I'm comfortable with running it with it on. Uh, we've then got the brake release, so sanding, brake release, headlight controls. We can hit, we can hit the headlights up much if you want. Bastard! So when you, when you get a C for hit, what you do is you have to cycle the power through off, then back to on. Oh dear. Oh dear! I'm sorry! There you go, that's my uncle lights. Which is what you want in the middle of the day. Um, so we've covered that, covered that. So, main consoles are pretty much identical to the Vectron actually. You've got your um, PZB mode indications, CFA's over here, combined power brake lever, so this is so traction indication, so using 150 kilonewtons of power right now uh, at 99 kph. You can see the little purple diamond, I'm sorry, correction, magenta. Diamond is my AFB set, and that is set to 100 kilometers per hour. Um, I've got cab light, desk light, hit it to off, 
combined, sorry, these are actually um, mechanically connected, but that's my uh, local brake, electric brake, to the right of it, I believe. Uh, you've got your horn, controlled by the spacebar and the B key. Correction, the N and the M key. Very much attention getting horns. Sounds very similar again to the one the Vectra, the Vectron. You can see now moving back around, you've got your uh, setup screen here. So if I tap the little OBB logo, you can see I can configure the train to run on DB, OBB, Cheska de Dahe, which is Slovak Railroads. And uh, I would basically select the one I wanted and go from there. What I can do is just press G to back out of that. Got your headlight set up. So uh, as we're in the basically I've got no headlights, full headlights front and rear, headlights at the front only, which is what we want. Put that in there. Um, this gives you rail jets, but it's mainly free for the rail jets. It would appear, and that's all that's on implemented. FM one FM one three four is my traction motors. To the right of that is my brake cylinder pressure, brake pipe pressure to the right of that. You can see we're using we've used 540, 550 kilowatt hours of um, power, and below that we've also used 39 kilowatt hours of power and braking. Um, all the way over the left, you've got the uh, 15 kilovolts AC overhead, which is what we're on. Um, that's basically saying you've got 15 kilovolts. So the game the train sim doesn't simulate that, but IRL you'd see it fluctuate. In busy areas, it will drop. In quiet areas, it will be right up at 15. Uh, Oberstorm is your amps, so that's how much ampage you're actually drawing. And that is your cab tour in a nutshell. You can see there's a back panel here. For correction, the back panel is actually in the, in the other cab. Cab door does open. Doesn't do anything to audio because lol, why would it? As you keep rolling, rolling, rolling. We've got a round break. 40 kilometers left to go now. The total distance for today's journey, by the way, is 58 and a half kilometers. And we basically stick at 100 all the way. Uh, this is predominantly due to, well, it's due to the, the trains, that, that, well, the, the uh, vehicles we have in the consist. I literally, all I did was remove my, my headset, looked away to, so I could tie a bandana around my head. Honestly, it just looked, looked, looked like a freaking frustrated 1970s rock star is what it does. But I, I've been getting tension headaches lately, which is definitely down to, um, down to me using, like having my hair tied back constantly really tight, not due to anything else. Um... And yeah, basically, I've just been uh, trying to use bandanas when I'm at home just to keep my hair out my face, but also give myself an alternative to uh, spring cheese. You can see we're now entering pretty much like Rex, well, RE country. You know, we've left the uh, sort of greater Vienna area and we're now out in the villages. Like I say, this, this is the sort of the main drag from Vienna north, so if you were going to, well, to sort of eastern Germany, Poland, the Czech Republic, you'd, you'd go up this way. The Nordbahn for a reason. Like I say, line speed is 120, uh, highest it actually reaches is 140. But we don't get up to that uh, because of the restriction for 100 on this train. Plan is to do a southbound service at some point. Um, I do want to find an excuse to use the CD380. Um, but I'll figure out how I'm going to deploy that. I might do some sort of diverted run. <sighs> Up a high speed line or something. Would be quite fun. This is not our freight yard that we're go going to, unfortunately. You can see there are quite a bit of stuff kicking about. Some rail cargo Austria, some DB, a bit of everything. see we're indicating slightly high but the, the amps are going to be dropping off so I'm not massively concerned. I 
do tend to drive like reasonably zoomed in because I can sit back like this and enjoy the, the, the high FOV. But do you know how fast we're going? I barely do. So really, it's you know this level of zoom for me. And again, like the uh, you know the hundred k speed does get frustrating from time to time and you do just want to blast it sometimes but actually it's quite nice to just enjoy the world go by Whew. I'm going to be probably doing a Swiss video soon with the, with the tracks so we use Bombardier product but um, I'm trying to sort of cycle through you know sticking to that cycle of doing a German or a European and a British then a North American and just cycling through like that I'm, I'm, I've not recorded Horseshoe Curve yet, which you've hopefully seen by now. Welcome to being a train sim YouTuber. We do stuff in weird, weird orders. My plan is to try and go to two week, two, uh, like twice a week videos through the summer my holidays, because I know a lot of my viewers are, are sort of, of school age, or people who have time during the summer. <sighs> Let's actually see how my average viewer is based off my analytics since we've got the time to have a peek now. But again, this is another new route that you guys haven't seen yet. I've had it sitting on a PC a while. I just sort of lost the um, the urge to do stuff with that, I guess. So, um, manage video, so technique, my creator studio. Analytics. Audience. Age and gender, not enough data to report. Lol. So basically, they can't tell me. To be honest, I've been doing pretty decently on views lately. Like, all my. So, my geographics are the UK, 37.2%. Brazil, 1.6%. Yeah. Whoa, that's a horrible sound. I apologise profusely for the. Pain and obvious emotional trauma caused. So, um, yeah. Basically, I got 12 views from Brazil in one day. Which is hella sus. <laughs> um, a lot of people are searching for my videos now, which I guess is nice. 45%. With 34% of my watch hours come from. If you search for my video, thanks for being a star. This, the um, 3D Zerg, which I, no, correction, RWA, because it's an RWA model. RWA, I feel like, start throwing you emergency brakes way too quick. This might be the spec of this loco, so I'm not entirely sure. Okay, pings from TikTok now. Because people are seeing my video. Oh, fuck. Um, that's going to make a sound in it. So, yeah. Oh, wow. My Merida Challenge video got 143 views already. I posted it like four hours ago. Not bad. Got a follower out of it. That's the main thing, eh? Yeah, I've been doing um, what I did. So I went up to my dad's today to... I was going to actually collect some food, but there just wasn't any. Um, that I, like Because well, what, the reason I went there, for context... Um, as you guys know, but I passed away in September. My mum, sister, and her my mum's partner were staying over there, and they said, oh, there's some food in the fridge, you can pick it up if you want it. You know, take it back with you. Well, I went in the fridge, and there was literally nothing there <laughs> that I was interested in remotely. So I, I ended up just doing some cosplay videos in the garden, because I really like recording there. Uh, I do have a cosplay YouTube channel. It's Emily Jane, the Costume Queen. I can link it in the description if you want. Um, and it's quite, you know, it's just quite a nice place to record. Um, and I need to go back again. And I even, like, destroyed one of my costumes intentionally. So, yeah, that video is coming soon, TM. Basically, I've got to go back in two weeks, put some more paint on it, and then uh, do a video being like, so did this actually work? Or am I just kidding myself here? like that station building. No, 
that's another 1216 I believe. Yeah, you can see we're just running north here at a uh, fairly slow speed. So you can see that's where we're going to Haha now. Because the and that's the end of the route just beyond. So there really isn't much extra there that you're not going to view today. And we're now in this area. So about halfway there, living on the brow. We started off in Floresdorf Yard. The route extends to Floresdorf Station and Break Wien Brunner Street. So it's not a particularly big route by any stretch of the imagination, but I still think it's it's done nicely, you know, it's done to a good standard. And that's honestly the main thing I look for in a route is, you know, is it done to a good standard? Is it a length? Well, and in terms of length, is it just a, a weird segment that, that chops a lot of stuff off? You know, like, um, for example, Southampton Bournemouth. Had they included Eastley, had they included Bournemouth Depot, it would have been so much nicer and it would have been a tiny amount of extra route build. And I would have paid a couple of quid extra at a worst case scenario for it. And that was even something I know when I was at Dovetail they were talking about, like, wouldn't it have been a shit nice had we done this bit extra? Um, but anyway, you know, and that's the way I sort of view it. And honestly, for me, this one, I can flash my headlights, that's cool to know. This one, I'm not sure. If I'm entirely honest, I think Hohenau is a weird place to end it. Floresdorf, I about get. I would have preferred Wien Meidling or Wien Ausbahnhof. But, um, like I say. So, yeah, but um, it's it, it's alright. Like, I mean, like I say, you look at the quality and the feel, and I actually think it nails that really nicely. Um, you know, like, I um, don't often sort of say stuff like that, but, like, the feel, to me, what because I've been down this route IRL, hence I'm commenting on it. And I've, I think I've actually had a tour of Haulage once, but I don't really, was half asleep that day. So I'm, I'm going to plead down on that one. But, um, yeah. Like I say, it's just, you know, yeah, it, it's all right. It's all right. Ba, ba, da, ba, da, do, da. It's all right. I, oh, baby, it's all right. I don't even know why I'm singing. I must be tired. I'm not, I, I cannot be drunk based off the amount I've had to drink. I've had one beer, one mixer of Jack Daniels and Coke, and I'm halfway through a mixer of vodka, lime and soda. Because I'm not the alcoholic you are. Now, in all seriousness, I've cut back a lot on alcohol, and I wouldn't dream of drinking like this on, on a work night, so... You know, I do sort of feel like... I don't want to say I'm entitled to a drink every now and again, but... Like... It's definitely not to the point that I would say... It's, you know... Yeah... But I'm recording this video and going to bed, that's 100% for sure. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing the Gothard Bond for my next European video. Um, and using the tracks on it, the 186, by uh, K-Trains again. Because, honestly, their models are just an absolute pleasure to do stuff with. Um, yeah, they're an absolute pleasure to use. For, for videos and all, and, you know, yeah. I need to learn this, the Swiss safety system, because it will force me to use it. But apart from that, I think... It's easier. <laughs> it's not the Gothard base tunnel; it's a different tunnel, uh, but it's still quite a cool route. Um, I, I, you know, I, I enjoy the Swiss stuff. It's just, uh, you know, it's nice to have River who do a lot of that, and it's sort of, you know, it's definitely not my bread and butter, but it's nice to just drive something very different. 
like um, even the Lake Constance. Uh, I want to do that one at some point because that's like it feels like you're driving a tram. If I'm honest, I think I'm just gonna retie this bandana because I'm just a teenage dirtbag, baby. Listen, you bastard! That came from nowhere. I'm gonna review the footage on that, but I've released my um, C for override, so I'm just gonna close the throttle. Slam it back open. Let the power go on. We're hauling empties today, so I'm not even that concerned about damage because what am I going to damage, you know? See, like, literally the beep happened, and within a second of the beep finishing, I had a secret alarm going off, which the majority of other models give you a solid sort of four or five seconds to clear a CFA beeper, but that might just be the fact that I'm on an Austrian system. You know, that's entirely plausible. Yeah. Like I say, who knows? But um, yeah, I've had, had an alright day. It was weird. Um, I went to Lidl's when I was on my way home from my dad's because basically my local Lidl is a really long walk. It's not that far, but it just takes ages to get there. Um, and it's definitely beyond the sort of range of carrying shopping home. So when I'm up at my dad's, I always grab like a couple of bits and bobs just to treat myself, really. Like I had a nice dinner and some snacks and stuff. Like the mix is often there, actually, because they're, they're really cheap. But, um, yeah, like a 250ml can of uh, vodka lime soda, 99p, which I can dig those price stretches, considering the fact that I paid £2.50 for my Jack Angleson Coke mixer of the same size. So, yeah, but like I say, um, personally, honestly, I, uh, yeah, anyway, I was there and like the, the, hair, the person who used to do my dad's hair used to do my one before I came out. Um, I was like, oh, is your dad alright? I've not seen him for a while. I said, yeah, I thought you knew he passed away. And that kind of put a downer on my day. And I know it sounds weird to say that and all that, but yeah, it was just made me a bit sad to have to, like, tell someone again. You know, but yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm alright now. I had a positive journey home. Um, and I'm now officially mended. I declare myself mended. <laughs> Yeah, I'm destroyed. Um, no, honestly, um, it's been alright couple of days actually. Like I'm trying to get better, and I'm, I'm slowly but surely getting better. Tomorrow's a rainy day, and I can't go anywhere, so I'm going to do some housework. I'm just sitting with my eyes on the horizon. So we enter a 140 segment. This is the this is the fast bit of the route. So just imagine we're going like a bit. Bit quicker, forty percent quicker ish. <sighs> yeah, for me, the uh, Vectron video goes live on Monday. Got leading. Oh, just the same as Saddles and Fowls. See, like that literally said C for once that I heard, and then I got emergency. The good thing about C for is um, you don't have to stop to reset the emergency, but still. sit back and stretch out. Got about another 14-15 counts when you think that's slowing down. 
Well, actually, about 10 km to think about slowing down. Well, actually, no, 12, about 12 km to think about slowing down, which at 100k, you know, you're still talking uh, about what? So at 60 km h, it would be 10 minutes. At 120, it would be 5. Where. Yeah. So you're talking about seven or eight minutes of driving still. Like I say, it's a, you know I don't object to this drive at all. It's a nice run. But um, dear whoever invented Havens, please make them f the, the new ones faster. K thanks. So what are we like on power usage then? So if you so far used 1326 kilowatt hours of tractor power and 43 of braking. You gotta think though, we're moving brake. Uh oh. I think it's like a about a five hundred ton train at a hundred kilometers an hour. And if you use it in twelve hundred kilowatt hours, you know, moving it a good forty ish K. It's not bad at that point. You know, if you think how much energy a car would use, or some lo you know fleet of lorries, moving 500 tons at this pace, you know that's that that's the, the joy of the uh, rolling you know of the, the steel wheel steel rail principle. The only thing is, we're at 99k mh right now. I'm just gonna close my throttle and leave it there. So we're now not using any power at all, and we are losing tiny amounts of speed. We've lost, well, lost what, 4k in about 700, 800 meters? Bear in mind, you know, I don't care to call it kilometer. You know, we were using 20, 30 times that, so we could coast for a fair distance. Yeah, I'll put about half power on just to get us back up to 100. 100. I am very close to falling asleep at the helm right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to have my It's Time for Bed drinker. Which is the rum and coke. Because that just sedates me. And weirdly, I find it takes this one, this brand tastes a bit like iron brew. And yes, I'm mixing my drinks. Hmm. This is going to go well. Tastes a bit like tutti frutti. See, they do also run them, you know, double like uh, Dosto double deck cars with single deck driving van trailers, which I think is always quite cool. Fifty-three point six brake, sixty-four point well, sixty-three point eight. We need to be at sixty, so we've got a while. Like, if I coasted, I'd probably just about have to break in a little bit at the end, but still. Just rolling through the Austrian countryside in the middle of summer. I've only ever done this journey in winter, you know. Never been to Vienna in summer. Vienna is gorgeous, but yeah. So again, to show you the map, you've got the initial divergences there. Ah. The line to uh, Stadlau and the line to Subenbrunn. But then it's a pretty straight shot. You know, you've got a siding over there which is disused and derelict. 
I'll cross half yard. But it's a pretty straight shot line up here. Sittersdorf, yeah, li the line to Sittersdorf, and then you're in Hohenau. You know, 10k, bear in mind, it's only about 7 miles, so. And what I'm going to say is, I'm going to be dropping to 40 in the area of our 60 limit. Basically, we go for a crossover as we enter the yard. We need to go for that at 60, and then the next crossover, that, or the next points that diverge left and take us into the yard, we need to be at 40, so. I'm just going to part, yeah, well, I'm going to just let the, um, hopefully let the, um, auto brakes deal with that. But I've got to say, this thing is great fun to drive. Like, I, the, the rail jet, once you get the neck of it and, you know, you're just relaxed and, and cruising. Not, not this in the rail jet, the 1216, the Taurus. The, the modern Taurus families. Are just so relaxed, you know. You you feel under very little pressure on driving it. Well, I guess it might. It's that's also the nature of this scenario. This scenario is entirely untouched, and it's the version of the scenario that comes with the route. One twenty. Well, doesn't affect us, does it? Got a coal train coming out there. Actually, that's a car train. So those wagons are like the cupboard. Although that's interesting to note. It'd be interesting to try and get a reskin of those, because I know those were in the UK under a different um, name. I'd have to research to tell you what they are in the UK, but I know, I know they do run out here. And it would be cool to get a reskin of those for, for the British network. Because I do quite like doing a car train. I might do that for my next video, is car train over the North London line. I have to build that scenario though, which is a problem. And I really can't be bothered. Like, really can't. Um, although I could do with getting a 90 out. Like, I'm trying to vary my content about where, like, where I go and all that kind of stuff, but it does get a little challenging over time. Like, I am ho hoping to do, um, um, it's not a Rosa Lime. Me. It's the other one. It's the basically the pass from Peshavio down to this side in Toronto. Um, and I want to do that for one of my up upcoming videos because that that's a gorgeous run. It's just, but it takes like 90 minutes, which is on the really long side for a scenario, especially after I've done three this weekend. And what uh, now? Why is why is that difficult for me? Well. In case you haven't noticed, I, I'm, I've been waffling for the last standby. 38 minutes. Yeah, 38 minutes of me sitting here talk, talking to you about not a great deal. Um, you know, and managed to keep it going. You do eventually run out of stuff to talk about. Uh, and I've been there. And it's not fun. Cause just, I'm just like, mute myself, sit and chill in the corner. Yeah. Pardon me. Is the most disgusting burp ever. It's a combination of Monster Munch crisps, vodka, lime, and rum and coke. At all. Oh, not a nice smell. Northern Princess Productions apologises for any trauma caused by that latest message. Bing bong. So I'm going to acknowledge that and I'm going to put 60 in the window. Acknowledge this. So that restricts us to 85 within the next 20 seconds, which we'll be absolutely fine for. We're basically there now. So 62.5, got about a kilometre until we need to, well, a little over a kilometre until we need to be at 40. Which is totally fine. So as the speed washes off, we'll bring that power, power back, put 60 in the window. And what'll happen is the. Uh, There we go, and the uh, rear static brake washes off. Then 
There we go. Gotta just clear that off once since I can now. I know I'm gonna get hit straight with this signal and I'm at line speed, so it's fine, but still. Worth bearing in mind. I'm gonna to drop the speed down to 40, uh, just so that we are definitely slowed down in time. It can be a nice gentle deceleration for the the air, I guess we're transporting in the heavens. Heavens, it's fragile goods. Wouldn't want to damage that. So the 40 limit actually kicks into effect. I'll point out where, but I'm just. I like to get slowed down nice and early, which means we definitely don't do, don't do a speed. So this is Haha Now Yard. So this isn't even the 40, yes. The 40, I believe, kicks in at the next set of points to the left. So not these ones, not these ones. Not the first, not the first. The second, the second. Second set of point work. So we'll, we'll just slow down to speed here. What I tend to do is when we get about halfway down the road, I literally, I'm just letting the AFB do every all the train management stuff today. What I'm going to do is give a blast of the horn. As I enter the yard, make people very much aware that I am here. I'm here, ladies. And we're going to dive probably down that second from the uh, right there. So you see those car carriers, they they do definitely exist in the UK. I know there's a load of them stored uh, somewhere on the southwest main. So we'll put 20 in the window. We should put a load of rear static, static braking on. And we're just going to stop against this red signal at the end. This red, The red signal that you see doesn't actually apply to this road. But it's just a really nice stop marker. Um, so, yeah. I definitely slowed down a little bit too early here. But I do hope you guys enjoyed today's little video. If you did, don't forget that like button. Subscribe to see more from me on an increasingly regular basis now. Um, I'm getting pretty good at putting a video out every Monday at 4pm. For those of you wondering when the next European video will be, we've got three weeks today. Because next week will probably be a British or American video. Uh, and then the uh, week after will be a... Uh, or the week after those two go out will be a European video. So I'm just going to knock the power off as soon as we clear that the uh, end of this. Is it a fall, Falcons or a Falms? Falms, I believe. I'm trying to read whilst driving and it's not easy. So power goes idle. I can actually put my left hand behind my back for the amount of powering I'm going to be doing now. And I just want, you can see that's our signal that affects us, but this left signal is just a nice stop marker really. And uh, we're going to pull up against here, and uh, I think we're heading off inside there for our break. There you go, bring the train to a stand. Reverser is open and off. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye for now.